It's Canada's oldest thoroughbred horse race. It's North America's longest continuously run race overall. It's welcomed monarchs, politicians, celebrities, and a continuous stream of people who appreciate nice hats. It's the first race of the Canadian Triple Crown and the most important race in Canada in any given year. Today we're talking about the history of the prestigious Queen's Plate. Dream track a reality. Imagination, faith in the tremendous future of Canada, and $13 million have built the finest racing plant in North America. The Queen's Plate at Woodbine Racecourse is old. We're talking really old. When the first Queen's Plate was run at Carlton Racecourse, here in the present day Junction neighborhood in Toronto, it was seven years prior to Confederation. When you think of the Queen's Plate, you think of, well, horses. But you also think of pageantry, prestige, legacy, and as long as you're under 130 years old, you think of Woodbine Racetrack, or the former Woodbine. But its origins were far more humble. In 1859, Sir Casimir Zowski petitioned Queen Victoria to grant a plate for a new race in Canada West. And on June 27, 1860, the first Queen's Plate was run right here at the Carlton Racecourse. The prize, though, isn't even a plate. It's a trophy, and originally a payment of 50 guineas. And in modern times, like this year's race on August 22nd, one million, well, one million dollars. The original race was run in heats, but this was discontinued in 1879. The rules, age of horse, and distance has fluctuated through the century and a half, but since the race has moved to Woodbine Racetrack, at the time known as New Woodbine, the race has been run as a one and a quarter mile. The Queen's Plate started at the Carlton Racecourse, but from the 1860s to 1883, when it moved to its permanent home at Woodbine, and now New Woodbine, the race bounced around the province, being known as a movable feast, which is a fairly scary sounding term. Now the crown jewel of Canadian horse racing is the Queen's Plate, pun intended, but it won't always have that name. Correct. The Queen's Plate wasn't always named that, and nor will it always be named that. The name of the race is based on the contemporaneous monarch, so the race's name changes, and we'll do so again. And for a day, the King's Plate becomes the world's most honored race. It's doubly historic this occasion, for it is the first time in history that a ruling monarch has ever witnessed the oldest annual horse race in North America. And they're off, the flying heels of the 13 thoroughbreds ripping the soggy track, urged on to their utmost by their frantic jockeys. The crowd comes to its feet as the 13 thoroughbreds round the turn into the stretch. It's Archworth's race, but there's still a thrill in the beauty of the gallant horse's driving pace. There, George McCullough, owner of the winning thoroughbred Archworth, receives a gold cup and 50 commemorative guineas from the hands of the king. Now, the Queen's Plate event has become the social event of the season, but it's far more than just a stake race. It's true, the Queen's Plate is far more than just a race, it's an event. These days, it's modern and full of well-dressed people in nice hats, but actually, it always has been. Since the beginning of the race in 1860, the event has been fancy. The pageantry you see today, well, it always existed. Let's be clear, the horses, trainers, jockeys, teams, and farms are the stars of the event, but sometimes they get overshadowed by the people attending, the namesakes of the event the royal family. The royal family have attended the King's and Queen's Plate dozens of times. And now Her Majesty is going through the royal box to view this 100th renewal of the Queen's Plate. There are the golden sovereigns, only the second time in the history of racing in Canada in the 100 years running of the Queen's Plate. The golden sovereigns are being presented in person. The other occasion was in 1939, when Her Majesty's father presented the sovereigns to the late Mr. George McCullough. Now I'm standing here at the finish line. The tapita track right there is where the Queen's Plate is run. 11 years ago, the Queen, the Queen of England right there, the Queen of Canada, sat there watching the race. They put down a red carpet all the way to the winner's circle where she presented them with the Queen's Plate trophy. It's a trophy not a plate. But the real stars have hooves and a tail. Take for example the legendary Northern Dancer, the 1964 Queen's Plate champion. But the beautiful horse from Oshawa was more than just a Queen's Plate victor. 
Northern Dancer would go on to win the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness Stakes in the U.S., as well as numerous other prestigious races that year. Racing fans turned out to cheer a national champion. They were not disappointed, for Northern Dancer easily sped away from a retreating band of opponents to win Canada's most cherished classic by seven and a half lengths. Northern Dancer captivated the nation that year and shook up the horse world in North America. His legacy is still seen to this day. Now the families and farms behind success at the Queen's Plate are some of the most famous names in Canadian history. The Seagram family of Waterloo won the Queen's Plate 20 times from 1891 to 1935, including a succession of eight victories in a row, as celebrated in this here painting. In 1952, the race once again became the Queen's Plate. The winner was Epigram, owned by the Three V's stable. In the 50s, the Taylor stable of Winfield's farm dominated the plate. Their big horses this year were Acadian and Red Martin, but they came unstuck under the terrible conditions as a result of three days of rain, a 35-minute post parade. And out of it all came a horse taken from Taylor the year before for only $2,500, Epigram, owned by the Veal brothers of Toronto. Now, for over 130 years, the Queen's Plate has been held at Woodbine, but there have been two Woodbines. The original opened right here in 1874 and would host the Queen's Plate until it moved to New Woodbine Racetrack here in 1956, now simply known as Woodbine Racetrack. So world-class racing, world-famous guests, fancy outfits, and fresh air. It's known within social circles as the event of the summer. It's known by horse aficionados as the most prestigious race in Canada. And after an unusual virtual race in 2020 due to the pandemic, it's back and in fine form. Fancy hats and horses galore.